welcome back to the Monster Matchup, the show where you get to know your foe from head to toe. And we've done it! Outside of the timed encounters of Kolv Teroth, we've made it to the end of the Elder Dragon Jam. But for now, the crescendo of base game, the final boss, in a manner of speaking. Today's subject is the big ball of bioenergy, the one who fires their laser, Xenojiva. Previously, we were talking about how Kirin was a bit different from other monsters. Well, Xenojiva also brings its own experience to the table. Its immense power, more than it can even handle, provides an explosive opposition to the hunters of the Fifth Fleet. Are we able to vanquish this foe and save the new world? Just how difficult is this monster? How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop, not sponsored? We'll be able to address most of these questions. Before we begin, I'd like to thank everybody who has supported the channel to this day, be it a subscriber, members of the Papa Gabe Discord, and of course the good people over at the Papa Gabe Patreon. Link is in the description. Your support is appreciated immensely. If you like what you see here, folks, leave a like, subscribe, and become a patron today. Now let's build up some dragon resistance, get your slingers ready, and pet your widow precious poogies for good luck, as we set forth to decommission the Dark Light Dragon. In three, two, one, begin! Xenojiva is an Elder Dragon located in the Confluence of Fates. That's right, a dedicated region for this fight, tailor-made to fit the biggins here. You start off with a camp section to make preparations. If you ever want to get back here in the middle of the fight, you're going to want to pack the good old Panic Button Farcaster. And look at how big this thing is. Now I know there are bigger monsters in the franchise, but up to this point in base game, Homeboy here is the biggest one that's not a walking level that you can actually fight. And you actually can't mount this monster like you can others. And traps are also not gonna cut it, don't even, don't. <laughs> Don't, don't do it. The scale of Xeno means that certain body parts are going to be in range for some, and out of reach for others. Its ability to reposition can throw off some attacks just because of how much distance its legs can move, and there's a lot of awareness needed on the hunter's part to not get murked. Shoop de Whoop's fighting capabilities include, but are not limited to, okay, let's see here. Big ol' body slam. Try not to get trampled. I'd call it a little tail slam, but look at it. Tail slam and drag, which is also bursting with Dragon flavor, dragon flavor forward slam, Kamehameha from the mouth, sweeping Kamehameha from the mouth, intermittent quick shots, fireball, triple shot of espresso, middle, left, and right, and serpentine pattern on the floor. So there are other things up Xenotiva's sleeve too. The big one honestly boils down to its critical state. The buildup for Critical State is not only visible over time, but once it hits, the monster's abilities are enhanced considerably. Let's go over some of them. After the explosion that blows you back, you'll notice that after a lot of Xeno's abilities, shoot, maybe even all of them, the floor is, um... The floor is lava. Not only will your health get chipped away just by standing on it, but it also triggers Fire Blight. This is going to be a big threat for the whole hunting party passively as Xeno performs its other shenanigans. More about this later. Next thing here, the bursts of dragon flavor. I say this because Glowy Dragon's other, and arguably primary, element is dragon, and it accompanies a lot of its abilities, especially when it's in its critical state, like the Body Slam being followed up by an explosion of dragon fire, as the crystal ground is crushed underneath the monster's weight. And and of course, this dragon fire will proc dragon blight. Generally, it's bad. Additionally, this bigums can actually fly during the fight too, upheave the ground with its dragon bursts, and quick zap you from above. Additionally, the serpentine beam is out for longer and goes in additional motion from one way to another. Though this move is often the sign that its critical state is about to expire as it gets stuck in the ground. Xeno has a very loud roar that would need Gearplugs 5 to fully ignore, and an even bigger issue is that the size of this unit causes tremors when trying to fight it, leaving you wibble-wobbling just trying to get your footing. And then during that, you're susceptible to literally everything mentioned so far. Tick damage, or an explosion blasting up from under your butt, or hazards on hazards, honestly. I think this covers a massive swath of what could be encountered for regular Xenojiva. You wanna know what AT Xeno has in store? Here's a glimpse. <laughs> oh my god! few additional moves, including a spiral beam as it launches in the air, more explosive abilities in what looks like a staggered cone, and the body slam explosion is now body slam 
explosions. Four lovely staggered explosions and a ripple effect. I'd say kill me, but eh, it's probably gonna. So overall, that was a lot of stuff to unpack, and Xenogiva can certainly leave people scrambling to land a hit while trying not to get carded. It really does feel like a final fight. The scale of it is cool, and there's multiple layers that challenge the hunter's knowledge that's been developed so far, as well as their intuition on the spot. What if I told you that not only can you vanquish this monster, but that there's also multiple ways to massively ease the process? Let's become the final boss ourselves, as we turn the tides to look at big boss's weaknesses. Alright, from the top. Right away, when you go into the first combat area, you'll notice certain crystals hanging up above. You can actually use these by shooting some stones or some kind of slinger pod while Xeno's underneath to have it come crashing down and deal some decent damage. Additionally, at the end of Phase 1, Xeno flies away, which leaves you a few seconds to sharpen your weapon and heal up before being transported. The upper levels have different crystal formations that can be used as cover for certain attacks, so long as Xeno Jiva doesn't crush them, and so long as you aren't fighting the AT version, because that one skips the first area and levels all the formations in the second. Whoopsies! How unfortunate. Oh, so sad. When fighting the Glowy Durgan, it actually drops different slinger pods for you to use, including piercing pods, which can really come in handy since Xeno is a long monster. You can use these slinger pods to disrupt the monster mid-flight, and after enough times, you can eventually knock it down. When that sweeping beam of heat comes swinging around, you can do a couple things depending on your position. If you're on the sides of Xeno, you can punish it with attacks. If you're far away, you can utilize the good old Superman dive, assuming you don't have anything else to elevate yourself above the beam, like an insect glaive, or unless you're built different and just eat the hit, you absolute gigachads. I'm gonna show you how to trivialize the hot floors, okay? Ready? Heat guard. Or the fireproof mantle and fire resistance, but especially heat guard. You see, when fighting Lunastra, you can still get fire blight proc even with heat guard, but when it comes to Xeno, this just outright disregards the floor as lava. A whole aspect of the fight is just duly noted. And ignore. And if you can't get a hold of it, be it through charm, armor, or decoration, the next best thing would be to at least have the fireproof mantle and dial up your fire resistance. But dragon resistance will also be extremely helpful. Temporal mantle to avoid getting hit, rock steady mantle or tremor resistance to not get wobbly legs, and to always remember to eat. There's actually a variety of different skills that can be picked up by eating, including feline fur coating, which looks to serve the same purpose of preventing damage from the floor as lava. You can also custom Customize your meals instead of picking from the pre-made platters. But Gabe, we need more. What else more can we do to call lights out on this bioluminescent specimen? Well, let's dig in a little bit more then, and crack this thing open through its weak points. I'm gonna mention something that's not covered in the handy dandy notebook here. As handy as this is, there's definitely more to Xeno than meets the eye with its weak points, and situations like this can also apply to other monsters. So yes, the head, tail, and front legs are weak points, with the tail being severable, and the head, front legs, and wings being breakable. But what if it didn't end there? See, the hit zone values of a monster might not be the same throughout the fight. In Xenogiva's case, the critical state changes the vulnerability of its body parts, as in, they all get a vulnerability of yes. Even the hind legs that aren't normally weak points provide those orange digits. The chest becomes an excellent spot for damage output. And the head? Oh, yes, very smashable. Watermelon noises. Now this dynamic also impacts the element weaknesses. See, technically all of the elements are effective across the board, but the effectiveness of each one actually changes, depending on if the big boss is in its angry squishy mode. See, fire and dragon are good for normal Xeno, and water, thunder, and ice are good for Xeno with the Iron Man 3 effect. Factor in Elder Seal, and honestly, it's a toss-up depending on what state you want the monster to be in. And of course, the ailment weaknesses. So we're not gonna try putting it to sleep here. And paralysis and stun might be a rare occurrence, though stun will come more naturally for the bonk and climb. The big one here though is poison. Now, although bringing a poison weapon yourself might not be the most efficient for damage, you could always bring poison bombs, poison ammunition, coatings. I'm not much of a ranged guy, but I believe these are words. If you're taking your Pelico with you, maybe it's worth having them bring a poison weapon. So keep that thing drooling purple. Xenogiva, the base game BBEG, is a pretty fun boss fight once you know the workings of it. It's a fight that puts your skills to the test, as a big boss should. Whether you tackle it solo or go with a group, there are pros and cons to each method of approach. But even with its immense power, the Dark Light Dragon will fall to the indomitable human spirit of you, the Monster Hunter. Final verdict? Uh, you set my soul on fire.
To think it all started here, in this forest, making fun of the great Jaggers for some reason, it's not bad when you get to know it. Same with Gyros too, he's alright. Yeah, and I love how it shows the growth over time as it became more informational while monsters became challenging. It's honestly amazing to see how far it's come. Mm, what you mean? Hmm, yeah, it's strange. I have the weirdest sensation of recollection where I posted cringe previously to establish a weird plotline in my internet series to build up to the episode of a certain mo- You forgot the pick -up! Oh boy, looks like we're not out of the woods yet, homie. Let's go. Next time, feast mode activated. Hashtag hungry feed me more dot com. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Hi everybody. Thank you very much once again for watching. If you like what you saw, feel free to leave a like on this video and even hit that subscribe button. If you really like what you saw, you can also become a patron today on the Pop Gay Patreon. Link is in the description there. And a shout out to the latest patron, Nicholas Argelis? Argelis? Archipelago. Thank you, Nicholas. You can also join the Pop Gabe Discord. Link's there too. And once again, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.